yeah, we'd just like to call up our first speaker here. Uh, so we have Prashant, who has come all the way from Dubai. I thought you, in, oh, India and Dubai. Okay, well, yeah. Well, where were you at, where were you physically before you came here? Dubai. Dubai, okay, so yes. <laughs> so, okay, he's come all the way from Dubai. Uh, and so Prashant is the founder of Spheron, which is a super cool company building uh, infrastructure for, uh, for dApps and dApp builders. And uh, Prashant is really passionate about user experience for, for developers and uh, building developer tooling that makes um, that uh, that that just makes the makes the the building process uh, smoother and easier for folks. So I'm going to turn it over to Prashant here. All right, man. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, you can use use this mic over here. All right. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, hey. Hi, everyone. And um, sh I should not say good afternoon because in in Web3 we have only uh, GM. So GM, everyone. And thank you so much for coming here and, and showing in this event. Uh, loving the entire vibe of the uh, consensus so far. So we'd love to uh, like walk you through what uh, I'm kind of building at Spheron. Um, I know this topic has not been discussed much a lot while we uh, speak in multiple places, but um, we believe like this is the topic which we should always discuss when we are heading towards more of a developer-based adoption. Um, so most of the People, if, if, you, if you're if you seeing this uh, diagram, it basically says like US chasm for Web3 developers. I'll try to dig deeper into that. Uh, make, try, I'll try to make you understand with the use case of Spheron itself so that you have understanding is like, once we make the experience for the developers better, what happens? And I'll also present some numbers and that numbers can be also like, uh, if you're building into the space, it, you can also use the same uh, ways of building the developer tooling experience also. Um, coming to, let me, uh, I don't know, um, slight changes, not, yeah. Yeah, I, I got the wrong remote. Um, so this one is the right one. So uh, speaking about myself first, I have been building into the Web3 space for the past four years now. Uh, we were very low-key developers earlier, so you might not have seen us uh, multiple places, but we were one of the folks who won very early days of the near hackathon, keep hackathons, and all of those things. We were one of the highly paid Git coiners as well in the early days. I'm also the block member of Kernel as well. Uh, we come from Genesis block as well from the Gitcoin. And before even coming to Web3, I have uh, done a lot of job in, in Web2 uh, infra and also Web3 health, Web2 healthcare companies like Siemens work with multiple companies to build software, so I come with very deep infra background. But since I've joined uh, Web2, uh, Web, sorry, Web3 now, I kind of uh, know how to do business as well, so that is what my uh, job at Spheron now. I'm currently leading Spheron as a CEO and the co-founder there. I take care of making sure like everything which we build at Spheron is been, is goes, goes to the market at the right time. Um, this is my experience uh, coming to, going to the next slide. This is not. Yeah. Um, so, shall I shall I use the same same change or is it? Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, we got the the next slide. So, um, what I'm going to speak about now is the state of the Web3 infrastructure. We all have we we all are attending multiple events in, during the consensus. Uh, we all are trying to understand how the DeFi works. We all are trying to understand how the money floats around the ecosystem. But but really, we even we are sitting in a Filecoin event when FEM has already launched. It has opened up a hell lot of opportunity for uh, developers to build around the data economy as well. So let me also brief you about what is the current existing state of the Web3 infrastructure when you look at around the tech crypto part, not on a money crypto part. Um, so if you look at the existing infrastructure problem currently, um, I can bet and also I can challenge here a lot of people who are developers here. Uh, go ahead and use um, IPFS and Filecoin and launch a web application on Storio data. You'll end up in finding 10 different services solving 10 different problems, but you'll, not, you'll end up in not even using one of them and you'll end up in going to some of the centralized servers out there. The reason of those things are the learning curve, which kind of comes with that, and that is what I'll be talking about, like how at Spheron we are solving it. Um, the biggest challenge which current ecosystem has is the, this second point, which is the grant dispersal model. Um, if you look at the infra space, um, how many, like, I, I'll not ask question here because we have limited time of 15 minutes, 
But if you have logged into AWS, you might have already seen one thing very common in AWS is like, you get 10K credit out of the box, or you get 1,000 credit out of the box, you get 100K credit out of the box. But all of those credits are not credits which you can take it into your bank account. You can basically use that credit to use AWS services. Uh, but that is not available in the Web3 infrastructure at this point of time while I'm speaking this. Uh, and that is what is one of the biggest challenges also is like, if you go and see a lot of Web3 infra, they are suffering from liquidity crunch as well in the market. When I speak, a lot of dump has already happened in the market. A lot of things already happened. The reason that is happening is because most of the time we give out grants in terms of the real tokens, which can be converted into the stable coins or, or the coins which you can basically convert to the fiat back. And that is a problem because if you, if you keep on doing that, people will keep on taking out that money out and then they will be like not come throwing back the same money into the ecosystem and that will kill the ecosystem eventually. Um, and that is what grant dispersal model is Ferron kinds of solves that. It's like if you want to disperse your grant today, you can go to Spheron, log into, I'll show you, uh, I'll walk you through how exactly we work, but even today, if you go to Spheron, you log into that, you create a very unique grant dispersal model there. We closely work with Akash Network, we help them to distribute around 10,000 AKD so far. Um, and it kind of worked out. That basically means like developers receive the grant, but they don't receive a grant as a money. They receive a grant as a credit. That can be given to them as an alliance model rather than like something which can be taken out from the system. Um, coming to the third problem statement here, which is written here, is like fragmented ecosystem. Um, as a business owner, everyone has their own use cases. You cannot build a business on, on like infra on only one use cases. Like, hey, you know what? I'm going to just give you the storage. Yes, you can. You can basically do that. But tell me how many of you like ever done that? Like, you have only used storage. You have not used something else. You will end up in using something else as well. You will need a web application hosting. You will need a CDN. You will need database. You will need all of different components. But the problem with all of those things are they are very much fragmented into different ecosystems. Like, so Filecoin is solving one issue, uh, Akash is solving one issue, everyone is solving different issues. But as a user, they don't want to go in all of these places to learn everything individually, right? You need to have one uh, unified system where they can go and, and leverage that system and basically do their, make their job done. Uh, that is what the fragmented ecosystem uh, like, well, means here. Automation, um, I don't know, like apart from GitHub Actions, I, just let me know like how many automation has been built on top of IPFS as well, or tell me how many automations has been built on top of CICD and onboarding experience of the team, because most of the time when we work, we work as a team. We don't work as an individual once you start scaling, and that is where the money kind of flows into. When you scale, you, you get the money. Um, and automation comes into the picture once you scale. And um, Today, Web3 infra, because of the fragmentation, you can't build the automation. If you try to build the automation, you'll end up in like not even building that. It's because it will be so fragmented, like you can't even connect all of those things dots together with just automating the things very easily. Uh, support and ed education, I'm currently speaking here from here. So this is one of the part which I'm kind of doing at Spheron. So uh, we, are, we love uh, providing education around Web3 infrastructure. Uh, we have been doing that from the past three years in India, and we are very heavy in Indian, Indian ecosystem. Uh, we have doing that a lot in India, but now we are expanding and we are, we are going out, out of the India to different geolocation, and one of the uh, is also in the US. Um, so we are very heavy on the support and education. And why I highly speak about that is because if we are standing here, we all have heard about crypto economy part, right? where, where money crypto part, where we always talked about DeFi, we always talked about DeFi aggregation layer, we always talked about all of these layers. But really we spoke about the tech crypto part, which is more open internet as perspective of the entire uh, thing which we are building today. That is what we are, like at, at Spheron, we are focused on also is to make that happen. And then wallet and tokens. Uh, this is what I, um, like I love being in Web3 to own this, but if you go to masses, they don't care about this. Um, they want their business to run. They don't want to like get into all of these things. I. Uh, I, can, I can bet if you go on the streets and talk to 10 different developers and tell them like to log in into your application, you have to install MetaMask, you have to have this token, you have to do that, and this, you, will, you are basically dropping them off. Um, and that is what we have to learn from Web2 people. Like Web2 has been very good in uh, building that experience part where the magic link and all of those things came into picture. Even today also now Web3 is kind of shifting in that direction, but again, the token is something which kind of restricts that innovation as well at certain stage. Um, so that is, I'll, I'll walk you through how exactly that can be done. So this is the other part of uh, Spheron, which we kind of kind of look into. 
Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, um, so this is for, um, for developers. What we are kind of doing is we are trying to make um, Isferon very seamless. I can, I can also, um, any one of you, if you are developers or companies are looking to uh, explore the synergies or, or, or you want to access decentralized infrastructure, go to Isferon and you will feel like a breeze there. You, have a, you don't even need a wallet, basically, at the first stage to log in. You can log in with your uh, GitHub. Basically, we have a target audience as developers at this point of time, so that is the reason we kind of kept uh, GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab, and all of these uh, login mechanism. But as we are moving forward, we are opening that up to more and more wider audiences. Um, you log into, into that, and you get everything, whatever I have spoken in the problem statement, you get out of the box everything. Not only that, you get team collaborations, you get private web applications, you get CDN out of the box, you get storage out of the box. We are currently working with, we are looking to explore the database option as well. So most likely there is a sponsor table uh, table land here. I'll be, we'll be more than happy to like explore uh, the synergy with them as well, uh, how we can work them uh, work that out as well. So once that everything been uh, bring together, a developer will have much more better experience using Spheron. And the beauty of that is like when we are building this, we also don't want to make it more centralized. We don't want to look at like centralized. So uh, there's an architecture which we have designed in the background. It can be very composable. Today Spheron is so much composable. Like if you want to sell it into the in in, in US. Uh, forming a US entity, I can do that. Um, so it is, it is that uh, composable. Can we go to the next? Um, so we have uh, this other thing for the protocol. So Spheron has two verticals on a very high level. It has uh, a developer vertical and a, and a protocol vertical. And for developers, we make them experience smooth. For protocols, we help them to save millions of dollars going forward down the line. How? Uh, if you have to disperse the grants, if, like what I was speaking, uh, speaking that point of time, you don't even have to worry about any kind of a grant uh, uh, issue where you are giving out a grant and people are dumping into the market. You can use Ferran's grant dispersal model to disperse your grant. Uh, you can use the entire platform of Ferran as well and, and tell like, hey, you know what? Let's say, for example, today, if Filecoin has to build the same thing, I can, I can bet it is going to take a lot of millions of dollars even to build what we have built today. Uh, we have spent two, more than two years in, 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 in building this. We made it so composable. So let's say today if you want to go and use Filecoin via Spheron, it's very easy. You go and click Filecoin, it happens. Um, and that is where we are helping protocols also to like not only just bring the uh, UX experience, but also bring the adoption on top of uh, their infra as well. And that is where the protocol, uh, the segment kinds of uh, works out very well with the Spheron. Can we go to the next? Um, this is how we kind of try to level up the experience of uh, developers once they onboard the Spheron Infra. We have aggregated, I, like we have heard about the aggregation of DeFi, liquidity pool, and all of those things. This is this was a very new term, I believe, when 2.5 years back or around three years back, when we started coining this term, people were like, "Why are you guys even doing that?" Um, but as we kind of move forward, we realized like this was the term which should have been. Uh, powered by a lot of protocols, but kind of not. The reason being because everyone was busy in doing their cleaning their own thing. So aggregation was something which was very important from the day one, and we kind of brought that with the Spheron. Um, no wallet and token. I can guarantee just log into Spheron today. You don't even need a wallet till the time you scale. The moment you go and scale, then only we, we bring a touch point of a wallet so that users don't panic on the day one. Uh, that is where the wallet kind of comes into the picture. We have no code dev tool. When I say no code, it, it is literally no code. You go to Spheron CLI, say Spheron CLI create D app, it creates a D app. If you say Spheron publish, it publishes the D app. You go to user interface, you say launch a new project, you just do it within a few clicks. And it is, it is that seamless and that uh, straightforward. And not only that, you get automation out of that. That basically means like you don't have to spend your hours of time in configuring your CI CD build pipeline or whatever. You get out of out of that box uh, from day one. Built-in grant dispersal model, I have already explained that, is like how we are helping the protocols to basically do that. One of the use cases was with the Akash network. Now we're expanding that as well. We'll see how, how we can expand that. But this is going to play a very vital role in, in, in driving the adoption. Just imagine uh, tomorrow if we have to, if anyone is logging into any of the uh, infra, they want to use them, they immediately get $10,000 worth of credit rather than $10,000 worth of uh, real US value which, which they can go and dump into the market. And, and basically crash your entire network. Um, education support, we are very good in doing that. Today, if you log into Sphere on Discord server, we have a support system, we have an education system, we have a Dapathon, we have Hackathon, a lot of things which is running, running around. 
to make sure like we are educating people around the Web3 infrastructure and make the Web3 infra more and more widely adopted. Um, simplified payment, this I just wanted to keep it here because a lot of us always get confused with the payment options. Why a user who is in Web2 should go and use crypto? That, that is how, always been a question. That now, should we really enforce them to install the MetaMask or should we really enforce them to do all of those things? I, I don't think so. But what we can do is like we can bring in credit card and debit card on top of that and then convert that fiat into the crypto over the time, which company can do it on the background. So that user is like, our developer is safe, safe from any such sort of a problem. Can we uh, go to the next slide, please? Um, this slide, I kept it because I just wanted to let you guys also know what happens if you improve the user experience. Once you improve the user experience, you really start getting the user experience feedback from the people. So they really love about when this use Sphere on, and that is one of the reasons I have kept it here. Um, it is not just like we are just building for the namesake. We are building for the users, and we, we love what, what, they are kind of, what they say about us. Uh, can we go next, please? Uh, this is how the, inf the entire Sphiron uh, architecture kind of looks like today. If you, if you look at closely, uh, we have our payment infra partners on the top. We have ecosystem partners on the, on, the, on, the, on the middle, and all the infra partners on the down. What basically means like, it basically means like, even though whenever we go and promote ourselves, we are basically promoting all the infra partners. We are not just promoting ourselves, we are driving the innovation on top of uh, the, all the infra partners we, which, who we work very closely with. So that is what how exactly we look like. We're currently working with more than 50 plus startups. That number is still growing. Now we're exploring an option with the enterprises as well to help them to like scale uh, and optimize their compute and storage and all of these costs. And a uh, lot of talks is already on the, under the way. Uh, hope so. In the next time when I speak, I, I put some enterprise name here as well. Uh, we'll make sure that happens. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? This is what our numbers kind of look like. And the, the reason I wanted to put this number, this is not an investor slide. This is just a, a slide so that you guys should know what happens if you improve the UX. Okay, You really see the numbers coming in. All of these things which you are seeing here, we have not spent millions of dollars in achieving these numbers. Like I can, I can bet every developer which we have onboarded, it cost us more than, even less than I don't know how many dollars. But it is, it is not more above $10. It is less than that. Uh, all, even if you go and sponsor it global today, you will end up in paying $200 of every developer you acquire. We have got more than 4,500 plus developers. We are still counting that. Our target is to reach by end of the day, like end of the year, around 50K developers onboarded on this Sphiron. So you can imagine what exactly we are kind of targeting now. And, and all of these things which we have done so far is the organic. There is no uh, thing which we have done where we want to like go and, and, and like spend millions of dollars in the marketing. Rather, like everything has been done organically so far. Uh, and all of these numbers which I'm speaking here, it's, it's, it's pure organic numbers. There's nothing which you can find out there uh, where we are doing some manipulating some numbers. Developers, when I call them, in, in Sphiron, we call all the developers who have a GitHub account. So just for everyone to understand, whosoever has a GitHub account, GitLab account, or Bitbucket account, they are developers. So that is what those numbers looks like. I don't know how fancy that overall growth progress looks like, but uh, we are currently every month 22% of a growth in terms of developer side on the average growth of the entire uh, platform, which, which I have quoted the number there. Uh, different uh, vertical has different growth uh, numbers, but th that is our average number looks like. Can we go to the next slide, please? Um, just next. Yeah, so this is what uh, I wanted to present. If you want to learn more about Spheron, you can find me at Prashant at the Red Spheron Network, or you can, you can find me anywhere you want to. But go to Spheron Network, you will find everything there. So you don't even have to even reach out to us. If you have to reach out to me, then uh, only for investment, not, not, <laughs> not for help. Uh, but, but this is what uh, we, we are doing now. Uh, next million devs. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.